Hello, hello, I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we will be discussing the characteristics of fluids and solids, which are essential topics to understand the behavior of matter under various conditions, which is a key concept for the chemistry section. Let's jump on in. Let's begin with fluids. Fluids are substances that flow and conform to the shape of their container, shown here. They include both liquids and gases, and this gases thing can confuse some people, so make sure that that makes sense. A gas is also a fluid because it's conforming to its shape and a bunch of other things we're gonna talk about in just a second. Fluids are exerting perpendicular forces, also known as normal forces, but they cannot exert shear forces. Solids, on the other hand, do not flow and maintain their shape regardless of the container. So in this case, our solid is just a little blue box just sitting in the overall beaker. Understanding the properties of fluids and solids is crucial for solving many problems in chemistry and physics. So let's start with diving into fluids more deeply, specifically by talking about density. Density is the mass per unit volume of a substance. We represent density by the Greek letter rho, this little p I drew, drew here. And it can be calculated using the formula rho equals m over v, where m is the mass and v is the volume. The SI unit for density is kilograms per cubic meter. So we're using meters and kilograms. Pressure is another important concept related to fluids. It's the measure of force per unit area and is exerted by a fluid on the walls of its container and on objects placed within the fluid. Pressure is a scalar quantity and the pressure exerted by a gas on its container will always be perpendicular to the container walls. What this looks like is if we have the container here, we are always gonna exert a force perpendicularly or at a 90 degree angle here. The formula for pressure is our P pressure equals force over area. Now let's talk about a subsection of pressure, absolute pressure. This is the sum of all pressures at a certain point within a fluid, and it is equal to the pressure at the surface of the fluid plus the pressure due to the fluid itself. The formula to calculate this is absolute pressure equals pressure of the atmosphere plus rho gh, where p atmosphere is the pressure due to atmospheric pressure, rho is the density of the fluid, and g is the acceleration due to gravity, so 10 on the MCAT, and h is the depth of fluid in the water, sometimes given as z. An interesting thing to note here for just quick calculations is every additional 10 meters of depth in water is equivalent to roughly one more atmosphere of absolute pressure. Next, let's talk about a more confusing pressure known as gauge pressure. Gauge pressure is the difference between absolute pressure and atmospheric pressure. In liquids, gauge pressure is caused by the weight of the liquid above the point of measurement. The formula to calculate this is our gauge pressure equals the absolute minus atmosphere. We could also rewrite this as atmospheric plus rho gh minus the atmosphere. Now let's talk about some unique properties of fluids. The first and most tested on the MCAT is that fluids are incompressible, meaning that their volume is gonna remain constant under pressure. Additionally, fluids exert pressure in all directions, that perpendicular force I was talking about earlier. There was also a relationship between fluid depth with pressure in a fluid increasing linearly with an increase in depth. This pressure increase can be observed in phenomena such as increased pressure experienced by divers as they descend deeper into the ocean, or if you've ever been swimming in a pool and you've dove in down in the deep end and you notice that pressure building up in your ears. For solids, we can explore properties such as elasticity and deformation. Elasticity is the ability of the solid to return to its original shape after being deformed. Well, deformation occurs when a force is applied to a solid, causing it to change shape, like stretching or squishing something. When a solid is returning to its original shape, the deformation is said to be elastic. If the deformation is permanent, the solid has undergone plastic deformation. Understanding the characteristics of fluid and solids is essential for a strong foundation in physics and chemistry for the MCAT. We have discussed the properties of fluids such as density, pressure, and incompressibility, as well as the behavior of solids. To further solidify your understanding of these concepts, be sure to practice problems that involve calculating density, pressure, and the behavior of fluids and solids under various conditions. Remember to keep in mind these key formulas and relationships between the different properties of fluids and solids. 
After mastering these concepts, you'll be better prepared to tackle a wide range of problems on the MCAT. Thank you so much for watching our video on fluids, and I will see you next time.